Aw, Gary's back from his month-long sabbatical at Disney World where he went by himself. <sighs> okay, listen, L, I know everybody on the internet loved you these last couple of weeks. Everybody but me. <laughs> Welcome to the L. Duncan no, Show. You know what? No. Here I was, haven't seen my dear friend, also colleague, what? in like two weeks. I've just been keeping up with you via the internet. And which, by the way, you know you've done something special when literally everybody on the internet is in lockstep with, oh my gosh, L. Drea, Cheney, Coach P, even uh, Miss Boston, yeah. crushing coverage, right? You couldn't find a negative thing on the internet about you. Yeah. And I wanted to be the one that was like, but Elle is accusing me of being at Disney by myself, just to be clear and just so everybody knows. Have you been walking around since you got back on your <clears throat> three-week trip by yourself to Disney World saying four, things it was like... four days with my family. <laughs> Saying things like, a dream is a heart your wish ma wish your heart makes. Oh, yeah, and then Tinkerbell flies across. Have you been no, doing that? We missed that part. We, a collective, me, my sister, girlfriend, mother, father, a wholesome family trip. Uh, we did miss that part at the Magic Kingdom because we were busy trying to get back to a TV to watch who I thought was once a friend in L. Duncan. I love you, Gary. Yeah. I did. I, mm -hmm. I was committed to the bit, which is that you, you were, were there alone. We even, our director <laughs> It was a even, funny bit. It was a we, funny bit. We didn't end up getting this, but our director even pitched. He was like, what if we have photos of Gary? We can Photoshop him, like, oh. just Photoshop him around Disney, like, staring at kids or, like, by himself in lines, cutting kids off. Oh, no, um, that actually happened. <laughs> you know, cutting kids off. Hey, that lightning lane. And these Disney benefits are no, I'm, I ain't never leaving. As it relates to my employment at Disney, after experiencing those benefits, yeah. I ain't never leaving. Yeah. It's incredible. The thing is, is that there was somebody in that line that was like, who is that 25-year-old that's in the slinky dog ride? Not even knowing that because yeah, of his boy. heritage, he's actually tickling 40. Yeah, I'm 56. <laughs> But actually, the Slinky Dog Ride, sad story, is one that we actually weren't even able to get on because it was it was super busy. Everybody's spring break, including a 37-year-old yeah. and a 40-year-old. Yep. Well, also because the Slinky Dog Ride is literally like the first roller coaster everyone rides when they're four. So, it's a good one. Oh, my gosh. One. Um, you're right, though. It was... Hey, it, good to be back. Good to see you. It was it's great <laughs> to see you. Glad to have you back, Gary. Um, it was really nice working with Shanae and Andrea. Thank you to them for filling in for you the last a few shows and that has been awesome. And also thanks to the folks that listen consistently. We love you, you're the best. We were giving you little shorty shows. We were mm -hmm. giving you little light packaged shows, if yeah. you will, because there was just a lot going on, so you know? Much. Yeah, you're working nine, 10, 12, 13 hours, depending on the day. And so we appreciate how nimble the show is. Shout out to our producers who like, it was literally like just yeah. trying to like catch a shooting star. They'd be like, oh, can you do something right now? Perfect. So right. they were great. Um, Christina, Sarah, Cologne, we love you. Uh, Jackson. Um, but yeah, man, it was really cool to be a part of something that is like so, like such a moment, such a monument. I imagine what it's like for people to be a part of like the Super Bowl or these sort of once in a lifetime events. And the cool thing is it doesn't feel that way. I mean, listen, 18.7 million people mm -hmm. watched the Women's National Championship, four more million people than the dudes. Mm -hmm. By the way, I think some of that is because it's on too late. I understand. I'm it's not, been on at 9.30 at night for 50 years. 9.20 it's still, tip was agreed. Yo, it's wild, bro. That was crazy. Wild. Caught naps in between. Oh, yeah. I, I literally fell asleep at halftime, and then I kind of heard, like, some cheering. So I woke up. I saw UConn up by 20. I was like, we're good. I'm yeah. going back to sleep. Um, 24 million at its peak was the women's game on at 3 o'clock on the afternoon on a Sunday. And it was really cool. Oh, Hell Yeah. But it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like um, like a moment. I think there's a lot of people that really think this is just like Caitlin Clark specific. And I would caution you and say, yes, like, are we going to do 24 million next year? I hope so. Maybe not. She's 100 percent um, a ratings driver. We mm. know that <laughs> three of the most watched games in the history of women's basketball she was a part of. So certainly there's that element. But we would have never have turned our nose up even last year, at 7 million people watching a Final Four game between South Carolina and NC State that by media standards didn't have any superstars. And they did, they did 7 million views. So, so this, is, this is much more than a moment. But, man, Caitlin Clark, she's, um, 
she's that girl. Yeah. She is her, you know, and she's moving on to the WNBA. They're preparing. They're going to roll out the orange carpet for her. Mm -hmm. She hasn't even been drafted yet. And people everywhere are like promotions and doing yeah. this and that to sort of surround her. And it's been cool to see, but it was just congratulations to South Carolina. And I think there's a little bit of sort of a, the uh, the South Carolina Gamecock fans feeling a little bit slighted. Mm -hmm. All y'all did was talk about Caitlin, even in the defeat. Like, you showed the shots of Caitlin. I would argue it was her last collegiate game. Yep. Arguably the most transformational collegiate player we've ever seen, and it was her last game. So they wanted to show those images of her, knowing that we do like a whole 40-minute post game of just the winner. We were joined by almost the entire team from South Carolina. But I will say this. I think we are apathetic to champions. I think we're mm -hmm. apathetic to people who just go out and win. You sort of, you don't think about the fact that South Carolina lost every single starter from the Final Four team a year ago. And all you say is, well, they were undefeated last year too. They're always yeah. undefeated. They've lost three games in like three years. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is what they're supposed to do. And it's just not. And I think that that is our store. I, th I think that's our responsibility as the media to make sure that we do a better job telling these stories so that you don't just sort of think of South Carolina as yes, dynastic, but just filled with a bunch of role players because they're not, and they've got some real dogs on that team. You felt when you were in Cleveland that the, that the moment was building with the, with the viewers and obviously the, the internet's feedback and everybody sort of tuning. Did you feel like more eyeballs just were on you generally? generally speaking, like in the moment from the arena? Yeah, it was dope. I mean, people were really interested in like talking about the yeah. game and there would be like, you know, men in their 60s or 70s that mm -hmm. would stop you in the lobby that are like, I'm not here for this, but I, I did see y'all's coverage or I did see the game. I definitely think it was it was a moment. I, mm -hmm. We did a great job like driving people to the moment. And the, the story's really wrote itself. It's Caitlin yeah. Clark versus the buzzsaw that is South Carolina. Can she pull off the impossible and have sort of this – but most people in the basketball circuit, I would tell you, knew that that's exactly how it was going to go. In fact, the the goal for all of us, like when we huddle up, you know, broadcasters always have goals. As much as you think that, like, we have agendas, we don't. We have goals, and they're always very self-serving. And our goal is, no. True. We don't come together with the script writers and, and sort it all out. Oh. But our, our goal was, because ratings always help everything, we know how dominant South Carolina is, and South Carolina specifically is a great second-half team. So we were like, we need Iowa to come out on fire in fuego because and build a lead yeah, they because crazy. if they don't South Carolina's gonna beat them by 30 so it, it happened exactly how it was supposed to yep. I mean they come out and they go crazy you're knocking down threes that stadium rocket field house mortgage really doesn't roll off the tongue by the way love you Cleveland yeah can we work on that it's not just rocket mortgage it's field like rocket house? mortgage field oh house. they threw in something else it's just in a the lot. in between it's a lot it's a lot it's like 36 it's syllables. a lot yeah well you got to pay per can syllable you, can you just yeah. call it like the rocket center or just something like the rock long, the rock Welcome to Alcatraz. You ain't getting off this rock. We love that, right? Do that. Um, but it was 90% Iowa, and that place was rocking. 10 0 out of the gates. I was like, oh, I can't wait to text L because I called this. <laughs> hey, they looked like, I mean, and it's exactly what you discussed, and it's exactly what Iowa needed to at least create some sort of cushion because of the second half adjustments. Caitlin Clark setting yet another record, 18 first mm -hmm. quarter? Yeah, first quarter. first quarter or was it first half? First quarter. Nuts. Yeah. Pulling up. Most in a quarter just in, beyond in final history. Was, was silly, and I was like, oh, here we go. Ryan Rucco, uh, Rebecca Lobo did an awesome job on the call, just like elevating yeah. those moments. And I thought... I mean, I was ready to I was ready to put the game to bed after the first quarter. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And then I went away for the halftime, and then I came back third quarter, and South Carolina had a lead. I was like, "Damn it!" Yeah, Damn it, it got a bit. Listen, Iowa kept throwing punches. They got yeah. it back within four in the fourth quarter, and then it, here comes South Carolina. The interior non-presence that Iowa had that Iowa did not have was the glaring issue. Was the reason that they didn't win. Every single shot South Carolina put up, they had a second opportunity, yeah. a third opportunity. It wasn't fair. Yeah. When they said, when you said post game, Camila Cardoso had 17 rebounds. Yes. You could have said she had 70 rebounds, and I, I would have believed it. Yeah. She touched the ball every single time the she ball went to. up mm -hmm. off of a rebound. Yeah. It was insane. I was getting so mad. I was getting so furious, infuriated because Iowa had absolutely no recourse for it yeah well honestly i was was playing off of last year where they mm -hmm. also were out rebounded significantently yeah. by south carolina it didn't matter but that's because they were hitting their perimeter Let's get shots. shots up and that's because south I'll carolina last year couldn't 
uh, couldn't hit from deep. Like yeah. Tessa Johnson came in and was just like Malaysia full wide. Like they just they're two. They have they have two starting mm-hmm. fives. Mm-hmm. They've got a whole st- four of their bench players can go start anywhere they else right length. now. They just they were they were as good as advertised. I mean, everybody yes. kept trying to get onto us because we were like South Carolina is going to win so long as they don't beat themselves, and they didn't, and they won because they were that dominant and they have been all year. But moving on from the game, the one sort of infuriating thing about me right now is sort of this this picture that's being painted that all the old heads, the old WNBA players are bitter Bettys who are bitter about Caitlin Clark and they're not nice and they're just being bitter and and I just can't stand it. And a lot of that is centered right now around Diana Taurasi. Diana's one of the goats, the white mamba. You're making these faces. And a lot of it comes from, from these specific things too. She was asked, okay, a champion, an Olympian, a Hall of Famer, like yeah. all of these things. She was asked about how Caitlin's game would translate to the next level right away. And here's what she said. Reality is coming. Uh, you know, there's, there's levels to this thing. And that's just life. We all went through it. Um, and you see it on the NBA side. And you're going to see it on this side where, you know, they, you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. This is just analysis. Like, this is what's annoying to me about being a female. You really can't win or lose. Diana Taurasi is one of the best to ever do it. She is one of those seasoned pros. She's been doing this for a very long time. She prides herself on agitating. She prides herself on being a great defender, right? Mm -hmm. You are asked her about her analysis and how she thinks she projects. By the way, we've been doing this with Angel Reese as well. How does she project? Camilla Cardoso, how does she project? Rakia Jackson, some of the women that are going to be Cameron Brink, some of the women that would be top, top five. The second that you are even slightly critical about another woman, then you're catty and you're anti-woman and you don't appreciate what she's done for the game. None of that is true. I sat in green rooms with Diana talking about Caitlyn and how good she is. Mm-hmm. That has nothing to do with whether she thinks her game right away is going to translate at the next level. We are not allowed to be critical or we're anti-woman. We're not a girl's girl. We're not. So what? And even if she was being critical, even if she isn't a huge fan, it doesn't matter. Who cares? We have to treat women the same way that we treat men. The old heads that were critical about LeBron James when he was coming out, this phenom, this wait until he introduces himself to that's their job is to make sure that Caitlyn feels them. And they would be doing Caitlyn a disservice, who, by the way, is a great competitor. Caitlyn Clark didn't become one of the greatest of all times because everyone threw flowers at her feet everywhere she went or fawned on her or adored her or thought that she was the greatest of all time or walked on water. She became who she is because undoubtedly along the way people doubted her or because she had something to prove to herself or because someone handed her her lunch and she had to get better and grow. There's nothing wrong with that, with Stewie saying, I think that she needs to win champion. Stewie's won four. Mm -hmm. That's just her opinion. It doesn't mean she doesn't appreciate her game or think that her game is gonna help elevate the W like we heard Don Staley say. Women are just always held to the standard of having to like never be critical or qualify. Well, before I, I'm critical of Caitlin, let me just say, Caitlin, thank you for everything you've done for the sport. We appreciate you so much. Now I'll be critical. Now let me sandwich it with another compliment because thank you so much because I want to be a girl's girl. It's like, stop it. But there's also a point of being, you could be critical. That's, a, that's the whole point, whole genesis of this business is like being critical. But you could also be critical while also being credible. I'm not saying DT's not credible. I'm like, no, no. But, get more credible but, than that. But giving Caitlin Clark the credibility that she deserves. She has. It's not as, you should not, every time someone asks you about Caitlin Clark, you should not have to preface it with, I also think she's great. Diana's been talked about Caitlin Clark. But you have she to, called her game on Friday and talked about how great she was. Correct, but you, you don't have to do it just because people are lazy and don't do research. That's the problem. It's lazy. It's, oh, she said this one thing. She sounds like a bitter old bitch. Let's throw that out there. Let's make her the villain. Which, by the way, Diana Taurasi doesn't care what any of you think or like, or what any of you say. She does not mind being painted the villain. But it's like you take this one soundbite. Have there been people that have hated? Of course there have been people sure. that have hated. But this idea that everyone's against Caitlin Clark and she gets so much media hate, I think that's I'm in this space. I'm around these women. They all talk about how great Caitlin is. And they're also asked objectively, uh-huh. to give an opinion on how they'll think. Kelsey Plum's been talked about that. She said it on Pat McAfee. I got my ass handed to me when I went to the... Sure, and that's And great. now she's a two-time champion. Caitlin it doesn't Cl- have anything to do with how her career will project. And Caitlin Clark will her. have all of that happen sure. to her, and that's all good, well, and fine. But also, at the same time, you don't think that 
Diana Taurasi's comments, and then we'll get to the other one about, you know, Paige Beckers or Caitlin Clark, who you pick it right now, because that's the one that I took issue with, if there's any issue to be taken here. But you're also sort of doing NCAA D1 basketball a disservice by being like, 18-year-olds are nothing compared to what we're... She was she's playing, one. I know, but she's playing against not just 18... It's not like every t 35 teams that she played this season were just true freshmen. She won 30-something games this year against sophomores, against redshirt juniors, against stacked senior teams. Saying. This is no different than when we say things surrounding the NFL draft. Yeah, but now he's about to go. He's about to leave. Even if he did play in the SEC, he's about to go up to the big boys where uh -huh. everybody is the best, where sure. everybody is an All-American. Where It's the same thing. But it's this the whole same thing. <laughs> We always analyze how someone's game will translate when they are playing against other pros and not playing against people who will now go to nursing school Understood. or go to mark go and become marketing majors. Like, but this there whole, is like, a difference. But this whole, like, reality is about to hit her. Okay, so what's the last four years been? Just like some fairy tale make believe. Not at all. She's playing the highest level of basketball that she can currently play exactly. in right now. It's not as if these last four years have been some sort of non reality for and her. And no one's saying that, Gary. It's not she, like. Diana Trossi said reality is about to hit. Because so she what's was. the asked, last four years? She was <laughs> asked specifically about how her game translates to the WNBA. Sure. I could understand if we come out of the Wooden Award ceremony uh -huh. and Caitlin Clark is standing there with her trophy and the thing out of Di the first thing out of her mouth was, well, enjoy it now because reality's going to hit. That sounds, that's like hating, right? Like she was asked specifically how she thought her game was going to translate. This is Diana Taurasi who's also a champion uh -huh. at that 18-year-old level who Correct. went to UConn. And in terms of the other sound that you're talking about, run it. Run that sound about who they would pick if they had to start a team tomorrow. Would it be Paige Beckers or would it be Caitlin Clark? Run it. You have to build a WNBA team. Who are you taking first? Paige or Caitlin? Wow. I have an answer. You want me to go? You go. I think you have to take Caitlin for one reason. Because I think they're so, you can't go wrong with choosing either one. Right. The, the fan energy behind Caitlin is going to be a game changer for a WNBA franchise. I think for that reason, right now, this year, you have to take her. From a basketball standpoint, I can make an argument for Paige. I'm taking Paige. Next question. You can't okay. tell me that there's not a tinge of shade. You know what that is? Shade. That's not a tinge of shade. That's much more about Paige. What do they have in common, Gary? No, exactly. They're both UConn alone. So you can't say that it's a it's a it's an objective approach or anything like that. That is complete. That's a completely biased approach. So we can't sit here and say on one end, Diane, what Diana Taurasi said can't be criticized. But then on the other hand, we're like she's only saying that because she's a UConn person too. No, I don't think that's true either. Because I think that listen, here's what I do know. I don't know a ton about women's basketball. I've been in this space for three years. I've tried to learn and grow and ingratiate myself, and my mm. knowledge has grown exponentially. Sure. But I never played a single second of women's college basketball. So I defer to the brilliant minds around me, mm -hmm. the brilliant minds that America fell in love with over the course of the last mm -hmm. month. Those brilliant minds have worked here at ESPN for a long time, by the way. Brilliant. And I've asked them the same exact question. No UConn bias, no bias of any other way. And they make similar arguments that when it comes to just absolute IQ, when it comes to basketball IQ, mm -hmm. the ability to defend, the ability to be a two-way player, to play multiple positions, mm -hmm. to also get a bucket, and efficiency, Paige Becker's scores top rated in every single one of those categories, period. And they're not hating on Caitlin or her game. It's the same argument as would you rather have Steph Curry or LeBron James? It totally depends on what you're looking for. Steph's not going to bring it defensively. He's never going to be in the running for defensive player of the year. Paige Beckers could be in both, in the scoring conversation and in the defense co defensive conversation. She has had to carry UConn through three significant years of injuries, injuries that she suffered herself. Mm -hmm. She is one of the smartest basketball players that great basketball minds have ever seen, ever. And that's no shade to anyone that's come before her. They love Paige Beckers. And honestly, they feel like if she hadn't been injured so much – she could have been in this conversation a lot sooner and more consistently because when she came out of high school, she was also that girl. Paige Becker's sure. first one to get a Gatorade contract. And got, like, she was that girl. So, yes, while there's a tinge of we did go to UConn and I'm going with Paige, it's not like she chose Caroline Descharm. With, shout out to her. It's not like she showed her bias by saying Nika Mule, right? Like, she said generational player or generational player, and depending on what you're looking for, Paige Beckers brings it all. So again, it's not shade. You can choose one without it being any type of shade or detraction from the other. You can say Paige Beckers because I like what her game looks like more than I like Caitlyn's without diminishing how good Caitlyn okay, is. We don't have to do one thing or the other, guys. But real quick before we go to break, Sue Bird gave us that explanation. 
Diana Taurasi said, Paige Becker's next, as if it was a dismissive, how could you even ask me that question? Because some people so, feel that way. But we, but we didn't get an explanation. We just said, we basically got Paige Becker's, why would you even ask me that, next question. I think in her mind, it's because if you actually watch, and that, this is my plea to the new fans. I know we have to go to break, but this is my plea to the new basketball fans, of which I was one too. We, you're welcome here. This is an inclusive place. Like, we're glad you're here. We're not like some of the other sports where it's like, oh, you just started watching now. Some people are like that. I don't think that's true. That's not been the case. But here's what we would like for you to do. Before you come in with your opinions, like, do some research. Look around, do some research, shut up and listen. Ask questions before you just start piping up. Because if you know anything about women's basketball and if you've watched the sport at all, or if at the very least you do your research and lean on the expertise of the people that do know women's basketball, there's plenty of people that could just say, Paige, Beckers, that's the sentence, that's the answer. No explanation needed, because if you know, you know. And with that, we'll come back. Hey, the L. Duncan Show is back. I love that we're about to tell you right now that we're going to do the rest of this podcast after the spicy basketball take uh -huh. um, surrounding a bunch of sports we have paid zero attention we are to. Flying, we are flying blind. This right guy, now. Gary, just, I saw you just stifle a yawn. I mm -hmm. saw it. It was like in your jaw right here. Mm -hmm. I saw you going like this. I just feel like I'm like half a second behind in my brain all week. It's been super weird. Yeah. I'm like, am I sick? No, yeah. I don't think so. Oh, it's just that I have no idea what's going on. I'm just, I am just aloof. I am just floating through space yeah. this whole week. The, a little insight, when you, at least, I can't speak for everybody, I know for me and you, Gary, as sports center anchors, or when you're on special assignment, you pour yourself into this thing. Yeah. I've been, like, entrenched in women's basketball for, like, six straight weeks, just uh -huh. not coming up for air, and that's all that's been the biggest concern, right? And for you, you've been on vacation. And as sports center anchors, like, we don't have off seasons. Right. We just go from one sport to the next, to the next, to the next. And we sort of have to divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. You can't watch and consume everything that's happening. There's baseball happening now and basketball and hockey. Wait, and what? Basketball. Baseball? <laughs> <laughs> that started? Damn. And so because of that, when we unplug, like, we truly unplug. Like, we're like, just... I'm just gonna. I'm gonna watch Love was, After Lockdown. It was I'm, wonderful. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna watch any sports. You have to give yourself that uh -huh. reprieve. But then, of course, the problem being, we do a whole show where we're supposed to talk about sports tonight. And, yeah, and I feel sports like Mr. Center. I feel like Mr. Tally on South Park. I have no idea program. what's going on. I mean, it's just... oh, <laughs> yeah, that guy. Yeah, I rock sure. with that. Oh, okay, so oh, we're no. so out of the loop. Our producers have come up with headlines. We have oh. not seen these. They're gonna tell us. We're gonna try to guess if these are real or fake headlines. Oh, things that actually happened while we have been in the vacuum of vacation okay. in women's basketball. Okay. All right, what's the first one? That this is true. Okay, that's true because I. I have had the benefit of anchoring a couple shows yeah. so far this week, and this this is true. The headline or the subplot here that that got me was that he's making less than he was at Kentucky, yeah. like by a million and a half a season. Yeah, that's I, major bread. But I guess the dollar goes further in Arkansas. Yeah, I mean it goes far in Kentucky too. But that's, damn, that's true. Um, also, I was so in the hole when I saw this headline at first. I thought it said Arizona. I was like, I thought they were pretty good. Why'd they bring this guy in? <laughs> you know, like, they were like a sweet 16 team? Yeah, I thought they, they were, were fine. What happened? Yeah, All so right. Coach Cal to yeah. Fayetteville? Yeah, yep. That sounds about Woo Pig Suey. He's going to have to learn that. He That's goes right. from where they barbecue and roast pigs to where they woo pig sueys. And then barbecue and roast it. Yeah. Still, still eat That's them. right. It's still delicious. There's a little worship and then eat it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, all right, what's the next one? Player loses plant pants sliding into home. MLB player. All right, so here's the thing. Baseball season is new. We're, we're about, what, 10, 12, 14 games into the season, and there has been some talk about how terrible the uniforms are this year. The, the revamped, they're lighter, they're thinner. They yeah, are, you can see their print. They're better a little bit, a little bit. Okay, you can. So it wouldn't surprise me to know that a pair of pantaloons have come off if they are lighter, looser. I'm going to say this is fake. I feel like that would have been a not top, but I haven't done not top plays yet. What's the answer? What's the verdict? What is that noise? A fa That's a fact? 
Who? Who? Producer, jump in our ear, Christina. Who? Elle is demanding to see I the live know. video. Give Elle says, no, she MLB wants to player. see the video. She wants to oh, zoom Riley in. Oh, Green? Oh, now I want to look it up. Rips pants sliding into home. Wait, like, do we okay, see so Green attractive? I, so I use the context clues to, to, to sort of tee that one up for you, Elle. Ah, okay? so you knew that it was real? No, I didn't. I was just sort of, again, kind of putting the pieces together. Plays for Detroit. Oh, yeah, Riley Green, center fielder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that guy. Yeah. I, I'm not saying any of his pants coming up, but I'm not going to look because we're on the company website. All right. As mm -hmm. soon as we go to commercial, Elle is just right. removing herself from Wi-Fi and LTEing this thing. You know it. Bulls player, player tackles, tackles team. teammate. This got to be a fact, man. They are in the doldrums. And that is, is that Andre Drummond? That might be. Could be. Bulls player I, tackles mm, teammate. I feel like this is coming from the punch a few years ago. Like, they're like, oh, if anybody, if there's a headline we can make up about a team fighting, it should be the Bulls because they like to smack each other around. Yeah. I'm gonna, I would have been more believable if you would have said Draymond attacks someone else again. That's a fact. That would be a truth. I'm me. going just off of GP here. Um, Bulls are a doo doo. Yeah. They got nothing to play for. Aren't they they're, a play in team? What? Are they not? I told you I don't know anything. Hell, I'm pretty sure they were eliminated from playoff contention in November. Yeah, okay. Season starts in October. They are doo-doo. That's a fact. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say that's fake. Yes! What? They fought each other? Are any of these fake? I was kind of going by the numbers. Well, yeah. How do you guys keep doing... Is, and, this, is this Tinkerbells? Did it's, you... This is Enchanto? Is this the... No, Encanto. Oh, God. Clearly didn't spend enough time at Disney. Oh, Enchanto. Spent, there's Enchanted. Enchanted and Encanto. Remix. <laughs> Remix. I put a Disney onto something. Uh, what players were they, if you can tell us in yeah. our ear? Oh, Andre Drummond tackles Tory Craig. I Ryan knew it. Young. Craig, how are you going to get fired on your day off for stealing boxes? Craig. Friday. Um, I know. That well, was I a, it was a bad Chris Tucker. It wasn't... You gotta do! Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> what the hell was that? Belichick, Belichick No, no, no. I know this is fake uh, because I saw... I, I definitely know information that's on Twitter right now. And someone was like, uh-oh, he was at practice mm -hmm. at Washington. Washington. He was I at saw practice him, at Washington. I saw him in the oh. Husky hoodie. Exactly. There we go. I saw him in the Husky hoodie. And he had cut the sleeves. And so everyone was like, oh, he's making himself at home. He's, oh, see, he's so there. you saw the update because I saw him in just this standard team issue. Oh, yeah, no. He had yet to cut the sleeves. Yeah, the sleeves. So he cut. finally cut the sleeves? Yeah, the sleeves. Also, oh, he's getting comfortable yeah. up there in Seattle. Exactly. Okay, yeah, no, that's fake. Even though he strikes me more of more as a Nebraska guy than a Seattle guy, just, ba just based off of. Not knowing him gen at all? Just, exactly. Generalities. Yeah. Nebraska. He just feels more Nebraska. He just seems like more of a Heartland guy yeah. than a than a Great Northwest guy yeah. is what I'm saying. Of, of a Husker. He's more a of a flyover runner. state guy. Yeah. Yeah. And and by way of um, well, actually, I guess the Naval Academy is in Maryland, so that's kind of attached to a waterway. Never mind. Okay. Next. I'm glad we had that. My geography is still on point. Fanatic assaults woman with a hot dog. Oh, a glizzy attack. Whoa, whoa, whoa! This I'm gonna uh, this this feels like on brand for the fanatic. This seems like it's probably not something you can search in particular. <laughs> yeah, which hot dog? Like yeah. a hot dog? Hey, whoa, hey, hot dog? yo, Ew. hey, wait. I thought the Philly fanatic was genderless. It's elderly with a hot dog. Is it, I'm going to say this is true. Now we're talking about a crime. I'm going to say true. Damn it. Well, it, we have a low bar for people of the Illadelph. Philadelphians. That's true. Well, and especially mascots. Yeah, the low, we, the, the bar is quite low. Yeah. Um, for for our beloved Philly viewers. They probably just took that from Grizzy. They probably were like, they were like, who? Is that what's his name? Gritty. Gritty. <laughs> you remixing mascots? <laughs> I combined. Hey, I combined. <laughs> Gritty and Grizzly. Gritty and a, Grizz, and Grizzly, a Grizzly. Grizzly's actually kind of Grizzly's actually kind of tight though. Grizzly. They'll deliver your alcohol for you. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, Drizzly, my bad. We are so sorry we are out for of all the of loop. the brands that we have yeah, insulted. Yeah, sorry about that. And we're coming back on the L. Duncan Show uh -huh. with some awards. We've got, Ooh. We've got proof when the L. Duncan Show returns. Oh. 
Remember, you can catch the L. Duncan Show new episodes Mondays and Thursdays. Come on. Your podcast, YouTube, Spotify. You can see us every Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, too. It's time for another edition of, I say another, this is the first edition of. The first inaugural, though. The Dunkies. Let's go. That's not a ripoff of a show that was very popular with Steve Carell in it. It's just an awesome opportunity for this award segment to be sponsored, but that's maybe for next time. You know what I mean? There's literally a Dunkin' Donuts cup on the ground. No free ads. Don't it's hide it. regular style. Let, your, let your freak flag fly, <laughs> Gary. All right, so we're going to do this NBA edition. Yep. We will give out awards, and the first award is the You Look Like You Could Use a Hug Award, Aww. and that goes to... Joel and B. Oh, congratulations, yes. Jojo. Uh, well, is it? Here's the True. thing. I know we're being sarcastic here, and I also know that I just said I have not been plugged in at all to May what's I? happening in the sports space outside of women's basketball. Aren't they, like, turning a corner? Yeah. I well, uh, won, like, six in a row. Like, turning everybody else in the East is, like, in the bed. Yeah, is no. It, is it not good for them right now? Maybe pre-February, maybe pre-injury. They were they were turning that corner, but I feel like they turned a corner straight into a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ever since JoJo went down with the injury, but his return, yeah, it's okay, is imminent. Okay. If you wouldn't mind uh, me giving this award as a, just an, as an honorable mention, and we only have one award to go around, so you guys are gonna have to fight for yeah. it. You're gonna have to fight for it, and this thing is worth its weight in aluminum. Yeah, Giannis and Tunacupo, okay, went down with the sprained, um, with a calf strain. So no damage per se, and yes, the Bucks were able to stop a four-game slide uh, the other night to the Celtics, but he is shut down for the rest of the regular season. Oh, what's that? Regular season ends Sunday? Okay, that's good. But if you don't have Giannis ready for the playoffs, that two seed is as good as nothing. Yeah. All right, so honorable mention, Giannis, you need a hug and maybe a warm bath and some massage. I was going to say, I don't think he leg. needs a hug. I think he needs, like, some – Tendon work. Yeah, that too, probably. All right, the next award, you mentioned him. the Bucks. Yep. The Dunkey for the Bus Driver of the Year Award. Yes. Man, get out the way. He's going to roll you over. It oh, is oh, oh, oh. Doc Rivers. Come on. Rivers. Here he is. Watch out. Mr. Doc Rivers. Beep, I, beep, backing it up. Again, I felt like I, I, I'm tapping back in, but it seemed like everybody was like living in this, you know, world of like, ha ha, eat some crow, Doc Rivers. However, they turned a corner. They started getting a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I think they're back down on a slide, mm -hmm. but their defense got better. Sure. They had like the worst defense, like in the NBA. And oh. it, it turned a corner when Doc showed up. So a tick up. Yeah, a little so tick up. So now you're not 30, you're 29. Here's the thing. Let me just ask this. This is a general question for the viewing and listening audience. Let's say, for example, as the Bucks have their doc, okay, Rivers on the sideline, if you at home had a doc who did more bad than good, and what I mean by that is the Bucks are a sub-500 team yeah. since he took over, okay? If your doc did more bad than good, let me ask you a question. Would you go back into your provider's plan and find yourself a new doc? The answer is probably yes, is all I'm saying, okay? So the Bucks made an in-season adjustment, and it seems as though the adjustment needs some adjusting, okay? And that's all I'm going to say. I'm not a medical professional. When my tummy tum hurts, I go to WebMD, and it tells me I'm going to die. But L, Fair. 37 years later, and I'm still kicking. Yeah, you're still making it. Yeah, I'm still here. You doing all those doc puns just reminded me, too. Have we have we done this one um, when – Milwaukee inevitably loses. The buck stops here. Oh, yep, yeah, that's good. Have we used mm -hmm. that one before? No, but we're going to integrate that. For sure that. we've used Nuck If You Buck, like whenever uh -huh. they win. Mm -hmm. Some 22-year-old social media manager is like, I've got yes. just the thing. What are you talking I thought you were going to go into your new regime of taking prebiotics okay. and also taking some some, some vitamins. Yeah, vitamins. You, uh, six days, Come and on. you're a changed six woman. Six days of vitamins. I'm Come feeling, on. Yeah, I'm feeling really good and crunchy and granola -ish. I can see the glow. I already hate myself. I've said to three different people in a very non-ironic way that I take spores. I was like, oh, God. What I, is that? It's an antifungal. You... You got fungus? No. What? <laughs> um, it involves your microbiome. Thank you. Gary, no, I... And just keeping those levels cool and chill so they can just like perform and fight off any other like random. Free radicals. No, I get it. Free radicals and also cannons. You want to drink stuff with cannons? I don't know. I hate myself. Okay. No, that's my that was that was going to be my that was my second guess. Okay. How about? Ooh, I like this Microbials. one. Microbials. The achievement in quiet quitting award. I'm fascinated oh. by people that quiet quit. 
I don't explain. I've never quite quit anything. I've just very loudly been like, what? You're not going to give me off to go to spring break and do ratchet things with my friends? Because I already booked the bus ticket. I'm quitting Gladys and Ron's chicken and waffles in downtown Atlanta. I'll get another hostess job. That's crazy. It's true. I definitely did. And a did bus. You? No. Yeah, I quit. I, I was like, can I have off? You got the bus ticket line. <laughs> I was like, can I have off? They were like, no. I was like, no, but I need it off. They were like, well, you can't have it off. And I was just like, but what would happen if I told you that if I don't get this off, you'll never see me again? And oh. they were like, cool, but you're not getting this off. I was oh like, gosh. cool. So I'm going to quit then. You're not reading between the lines because I am taking this I'm gonna go. weekend off. I just may go yeah. unemployed, but I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saving up every dollar that I have, every tip that I've been bestowed. I've won- I, I quietly quit. I didn't announce who this goes to, Gary. Oh, I'm sorry. The refs in Tuesday's Celtics ah. game because two free throws were shot the whole game. They just did laps. They were like, you know what, boys? You know what, boys? We're just going to – what was the dude that wrote the uh, book about refs, Tim Donaghy? Uh-huh. He said, oh. Sometimes, oh. He said sometimes they would huddle up and they'd be like, yo, I'm not feeling it today. We ain't yeah, feeling nothing. Like, or they would say the first person to blow their whistle has to buy dinner. Uh-huh. So refs would choke their so whistle. So they had money they on the money. <laughs> yeah. And listen, man, you're in Milwaukee, so he's like, yo, we got the quicker we get out of here, the quicker we can step out in Milwaukee. Hey, Millie. Hey, is, Milwaukee. Uh, yo, people sleep on Milwaukee. Who sleeps on I love There's Milwaukee. There's like some real bops to get the into. The Pfizer Forum area? Yes. Like those complexes teams are building? Great. I love them. You can stay indoors the whole time because they get it. It's cold and so like yeah. that. Is it cold in April? In, probably. Of course it is. Probably. All right, and let's do one more. Mm-hmm. I want to give this award to oh. someone because they were also in Boston uh-huh. at the same time that we were. Yep. God bless them. And uh, <laughs> and so the Lifetime Achievement Award uh-huh. for Short King oh. could also sub in as Lifetime Achievement Award for Any Dude. And dog, I'm telling you, I'm not going. Is Isaiah Thomas. Not that one, the other one, the short one. one. Isaiah he Thomas. His name like regularly. Like a, yeah. yes, just like a regs. Yeah, Isaiah. Stan- standard Isaiah. Standard Isaiah because he just signed another deal with the Suns. Boom, get your money. Through the end of the year, this, of course, this guy will go down as notoriously the guy who was like, I'm going to play through this pain, yes. injury in Boston, was putting up giant numbers, nasty numbers. He was dropping 50 every yeah, other night. Every he other had the city on his back, Correct. and he was quite literally knocking on the doorstep, the front door of a max yes. contract, and everybody in Boston. And it's so hard to do that to get the sports radio people in Boston oh, yeah. to be like, this is a max contract guy. And it, you mentioned it. It's a cautionary tale of like, if you are hurt – you got to do what's yeah. best for yourself because that 150 mil, 160 mil that he was dang near guaranteed, he was on the goal line of signing, went away because the hip was bum. Yeah. He blew the hip. I mean, it was a magical run that he took the Celtics on. So it's good to see that he's, you know, still getting paid, still getting to play IT. I love that for you, and Isaiah Thomas. Way to go. You are the man. You got your money. Well, but y'all gonna have to fight for this because unlike y'all getting your money, we have a limited budget yeah. and we could only get one of those things. So you think this that they sprung for aluminum? Because I feel like this is a piece of wood that they used a piece of gray wood? silver like stuff on. That's funny that you think we bought a piece of wood and spray paint That's when fair. we could have just spent money on one item fair. cast aluminum. Yep. Worldwide leader. <laughs> 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 Hey, the L. Duncan Show. Come on. New episodes drop every Monday and Thursday. Tell somebody, man. Come on, man. Like the little engine that could. Help us out. You know what I'm saying? I think I can. I think I can get even more viewers if you tell somebody. Heard that. Hey. Like the ripple effect. Uh, and I'm glad you brought that up because I need this show like I need aloe for an itch, okay? This is like an hour-long brain dump. You can put some, you can put the pieces together. It's an hour-long brain dump. We get to catch up with everything that happened, yeah. catch up with everything that didn't happen. But most importantly, L, you are my direct source for the what? The HG, the hot goss. And I haven't gotten a good story from you because I haven't seen you yeah. in about two weeks, but I got to imagine something went down. You got some cool stories to share from Cleveland, and your newfound but still existing fame uh, <laughs> now that you are America's sweetheart. Give me something good, L. Give me something good. Yeah, then they watch the show, and I'm like, glizzy! <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Let's see. Okay, so there are definitely like I'm not. I don't want to be that person that's like name dropping. I'm yes. about to be that person. No, I need dropping. you to name drop. But it's it's cool sometimes when you. I mean, I definitely still fangirl over some of the people I get to call friends. I'm uh -huh. like, I cannot believe that I get to hang out with like Sue Bird and Megan Rapinoe. I thought so. you were going to say me. That's my okay. No, that's uh, you too, Gary. I, never, I, I assumed wrong. My bad. Um, like I, I like I'm such a fan of Mina Kimes. Like when she texts me, I still like geek out like a little girl. It's kind of weird. Anyway. Um, so I've known Megan and Sue for a couple of years now around the circuit, and they're just like the best people. And I got a chance to hang out with some of the uh, women from Together, which is the oh, yeah. women-run media company, fantastic ladies. Um, that's who makes the shirts. Mm -hmm. Everyone watches women's sports. Are you dull? And um, anyway, Jason Sudeikis cool with him shirt, because but... Jason Sudeikis is like a super – uh, women's sports fan, yeah. huge supporter, does a lot with their project. So the Ted Lasso, yeah, the Ted Lasso. So, um, so we're hanging. Uh, we leave the like ESPN party, and Sue and Megan and them are like, "Hey, you know, we got like this little room area at the bottom of our hotel that's called like the Vault. It's like cool. We can just like go and hang and whatever." And I've definitely been around like tons of celebrities before, and you know, you never want to be like too eager or too much a fan. They mm -hmm. have people fawn over them all the time. It just should be organic. Like most of the time, they're so chill and cool. They're in like really like non-crowded environments, so they're not as guarded as maybe they would be yeah. if they were like you know surrounded by fans taking pictures and shit like that. There's just, just like a small group of people just hanging and being cool. But because it was Ramadan, I had not been drinking for a month. Oh. And then on top of that, we had gone straight from the game to this like after party. So I had gone a solid nine, 10 hours you without a famished. meal. I was famished. There was nothing to sustain me except for the dry aged cherries from my old fashioned. And at some point, it's like I'm like half a drink in, and like I'm talking to Jason Sudeikis and Ryan Rucco, our amazing like talent, and they're talking, and I am just like, I'm feeling it. Uh oh! Somebody get me a seat. And like, all otherwise I, I'm gonna find one. All I can do, like, they're be, they're talking about like creative stuff and being creative, and all I can think in my head is like, don't bring up Ted Lasso. Don't bring up Ted Lasso. He probably hates that. Like, he mm -hmm. had such a career before Ted Lasso. Don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. He did. And then he says like something, and I'm like, oh, Ted Lasso. And he's like, no. And he goes back to like his conversation with Ryan. I was like, channel one. So that one. Blew it. Anyway, Jason Sudeikis is a cool dude. He's so approachable, chill. Um, is cool with Caitlin Clark. That's why he was there. Got oh, yeah, cool with her right. family. Like, big fan, big supporter. Like, the coolest dude ever. If he sees this, I hope I didn't act like a moron. I'm really sorry. It, I blame Ramadan. So there was no follow-up to that. You were just like, Ted Lasso, no. I kind of hung a little bit. Gonna, uh, I hung a little bit uh, and longer. And then you Homer, and then you Homer Simpsoned like, it, and then yeah, you just well, sort of phased like in the someone, back. Of like, someone bailed me out, luckily, like, by grabbing my hand and, like, dancing with me. I was like, yeah, that's exactly. I just was so embarrassed. <laughs> I just kind of stood there and was like, like, well, I blew that. So hopefully he doesn't think I'm a weirdo. But he was super cool, man. So that was cool. I was like, dude, I got to hang out with Jason Sudeikis. Like, yeah. That, well, no, God. no. He got to hang out with. Oh yeah. That's L. Duncan. What I'm sure he was thinking. You know what I'm saying? What about you? Did you? You were because you were at. Did, did I see you at Tim Tebow's event? So this this is the second year that, um, for whatever reason, he's asked me to do the celebrity intros. Yeah. Um, which this year we turned into a bit of a roast. Ah. I took a chance. I took a chance roasting 20 celebrities who are far better than me, more successful than me, and, and better in, in every category of that. But it went off pretty well. I, I went into Chip Gaines pretty, pretty aggressively to the point where after the joke that I you know, um, used on him, uh, this, this awesome couple, two sets of awesome um, couple came up to me and they're like, oh man, that was, that was really funny. We really enjoyed that. You know, we, we work with we work at Chick-fil-A at corporate. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. I love Chick-fil-A. They're like, yeah, we're just down here for the event. And then, you know, they, they asked me where I'm from. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I'm up in Connecticut. And one of the gentlemen was like, what's the Chick-fil-A scene like in Connecticut? I was like, there's two of them. Thanks for asking. One's by my work and one's by where I live. I'm a frequent flyer. As a matter of fact, I, I applied and tried to be a, a franchisee of one of your locations because I love it so much. And I know that the hit rate is like my jokes up there. It's nominal. They loved it. It's like 0.1% of all applicants. It's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So um, they're like, oh, no, that, that's interesting. And I was like, what is it that you do again at Chick-fil-A? <laughs> they're like, oh, we're just in marketing. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, cool. I got a bone to pick with one of your executives. It starts with a C. I know that. I met him in L.A. I told him, hey, I applied to be a franchisee, and I didn't get accepted. Oh, well, I guess I'm not good enough for Chick-fil-A. <laughs> it was <laughs> whatever. And we're having a great time, and we say goodbye or whatever. 
And then uh, one of my buddies, Jake, who was sort of like one of the liaisons for the foundation, came up to me like 10 minutes later. And he was like, Gary, that was so funny. That was, that was, so, that was so good. Do you know who those people were? I was like, yeah, they work at Chick-fil-A. They're at corporate. And they're like, yeah, yeah. They're the, <laughs> they're the children and grandchildren of the founders of Chick-fil-A. Kathy. I was, like, I was like, no, they just said they worked at corporate in yeah. marketing. I was like, Jake, where were you at when I needed you 10 minutes ago? They're like, don't worry. They thought it was funny. They still want to have you down to maybe do one of their events. I was wow. like, yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it, Jake. That's, so that's honestly because to a the family. Kathy, yeah, the Kathy appreciate are the a, time. A Kathy very family. chill family, man. Yeah. Um, I actually, what's funny is I knew, I guessed who one of them was. Yes. I went to high school with. She yes. married into the family. You would have never Amy known. Turner, Kathy. Amy was incredible. Yeah, she's so sweet. Just she's been awesome. sweet since high school. Like she's like been such a nice person since high school. They're like real chill. Yeah. You'll just be hanging out with them, and like they'll just be doing their thing, wearing their George gear, yeah. go dogs, and you'll be like, oh, you're the founders of Chick Fil A. That's cool. Yeah. NBD, send us some of that sugar chicken, man. We love Chick Fil A. <laughs> sure do. <laughs> we would love for you to be a sponsor of the L Duncan Show, featuring the Gary Streisky that insulted one of your corporate Whoa. liaisons. That's going a little bit too stuff. far. It's fine. It's fine. All right, we're going to come back on the other side and tease what we got next week. <laughs> hey, next week on the L. Duncan Show, we're going to have some incredible guests to be determined. I said yes, yes. <laughs> we think. For the WNBA draft and for the NFL draft. So we will see you next week. See you on Monday. Have a good weekend. Holler.